Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome today. Woo. Jay. Everyone stand and join us if you're able. Here we go now. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus. Just And who may visit later on on YouTube, we welcome you to our 11 o'clock service. We have a few announcements this morning. First, I'd like to remind you that in the back of the chairs, there's a Get Connected card. So people can write their names on it that are new to the church. We'd love to welcome you officially. And this is our way of doing that. So please make use of the welcome cards. Okay, that's connect card. Yard day. We had an announcement that it was going to be this last Saturday, but thank God for the blessing of rain. The grass was so wet we couldn't do it Saturday. Uh, so then we were going to try to get it done on the 19th, and now... Because it might rain next Saturday, we're going to try again tomorrow. For those of you that would like to help out, please see Gary Loving, Loving after the service, and he'll tell you more about it. But that should be tomorrow at 7 o'clock, Gary. Does that sound about right? Later? Okay. 
About eight o'clock, maybe nine? Nine o'clock. Okay, we have it we have a time and a date. So now that we've got that, there's also the reminder, please only bring water into the sanctuary, our new carpet. And I think that leads me to ask John if he had an announcement for the uh, covering for the floor we have currently today. This is temporary, not permanent. of your money. We're trying to protect the investment. Um, I'm working on a better long-term plan, but for the next couple potlucks, this is probably what we have. So, uh, sorry, I don't know what else to do, but if we get coffee and junk in the carpet and all that, we're, they're going to fire me. So, that's what we're doing. We don't want John to get fired. <laughs> okay, thank you, John. Appreciate that. Uh, oh, before I forget... Today is National Filet Mignon Day. It also happens to be National Left-Handers Day. That's, that's me. Sweet. I keep the pen in the left pocket so I can reach it and write things down faster. And it also is National Prosecco Day. So all you left-handers out there, have a, one glass of Prosecco, maybe, and enjoy your filet mignon. That's that part. Uh, ah, next Saturday on the 19th uh, at 10.30 a.m., we will meet at the church to participate in the Operation Christmas Child Prayer Walk. For more details, see or call Deb Bath. That, her number is in the bulletin for you. Um, Tuesday Bible Study has restarted. Every chapter and verse in God's, words, God's Word are important. There's some teachings that uh, Pastor Tom has been sharing with us on Genesis of being part of a dysfunctional family. And I think you'll really enjoy the continuation of that this coming Tuesday at 2 p.m. And uh, it was really packed last week, so... Come join the fun as we study more in God's Word, Genesis. The Sunday Adult Bible Study at 9.30. Uh, Bruce Novak has taken that over, and we did a great job on the second session today, um, looking into more about sunny days, uh, rainbow days, um, normal days, and I don't know what's going on kind of days where it's a mystery. <laughs> and we're learning more about how close God really is if we just seek him. Bruce, did you have anything more you'd like to add? No? Okay. Okay, good. <laughs> so we meet at 9.30 Sunday mornings just before the service here. Uh, oh, next NBC Women's Breakfast will be Thursday, August 24th from 10 to noon at Trail Riders. Please RSVP to Kim, and her number is there as well. And let's see, there's the new sanctuary open house is gonna be on Sunday, August 27th uh, at 11 a.m. We have service, and then I believe it's just after service that we will have the Arizona barbecue and uh, please invite all of your friends and family to help us celebrate the new expanded uh, sanctuary that we have here at Nutrioso Bible Church. And that will be catered, but there are, there's a sign-up sheet for specific uh, side dishes and things that I'm trying to remember. It's Shirley is the one to see about that so that you're signed up. And finally, for announcements, we have a new ministry starting up, which uh, John Petroselli will come and explain a little bit more about. NBC Cares.
Hello, um, this is going to be a men's ministry um, for our new Trioso church family mostly um, to help with people's projects around their houses and here at the church. Um, there will be a clipboard going around for the men. If you'll put your name and phone number and email address, I'll contact you and we'll figure out everybody's abilities and skills and uh, we'll get it going and start helping some people. Thanks. John's got that sign-up sheet, and he'll be passing it around. Um, I don't see another pen, but here's one that works. I know it works, because that's a left-handed <laughs> pen, by the way. Yes, thank you. <laughs> now... I think I covered all the announcements, but if I missed anything, is there anything else others wish to remind me of that needs to be announced? Rebecca, could someone bring the microphone to Rebecca, please? We are still collecting items for our shoe boxes and we're going to walk around the church. I invite everybody to come on next Saturday. And, but we are still collecting the items needed for the, the boxes, the educational items. So. Okay, by next Saturday, you're talking about the prayer walk first, but also but to bring things to it for the Operation Tr Christmas Child. Please see Rebecca afterwards. Um, in the back ta table. Take the microphone so everybody can hear you. Is that it? Okay. Oh, Kim. I want to pass around the sign-up sheet, sign sheet for the breakfast. For the ladies' breakfast. The ladies. That's the ladies what that breakfast. sheet is for. <laughs> we have another clipboard going around for the ladies' breakfast that was announced. So I think that pretty much takes care of announcements. We can move on to praise and prayer. And voila, it's there. Mary. I just want to praise the Lord for our prayer warriors that go back. There's somebody back in, in the back room every Sunday praying for what goes on out here, for the speaker, the people, and they pray however God leads them. But I just thank God for the people who have signed up to pray through worship and are willing to miss a worship service themselves in order to pray. Praise God. Thank you, Mary. I had the pleasure of doing that a couple weeks back. And Mary has been so gracious to help set up a little booklet that gives us some guidelines. So you don't have to come up with it all on your own. But if you feel led to pray for the service, please see Mary afterwards. And you can sign up and help the group that's already signed up to pray through the service for God's will to be done and hearts to be softened for the Lord. Uh, any other praises? Thank you, David, for bringing the microphone forward. Most of you don't know us. My name is Baitha Garner. Kirk and I started coming to your church last year for just a short time because we're part of your summer group. I want to talk to you about my daughter. My daughter, Regent's husband, died three years ago. He left her destitute, deeply in debt. Also, painfully, she still had children at home. Three years later, she is totally out of debt. She has married another wonderful man and recently was invited to a national conference to talk about her reading program for children. This is all due to God, because when Ray died, she was hopeless. 
She called Kirk and I and she said, what do I do? How do I do? Because he had left her with nothing, but he'd also always taken care of all the finances. She didn't even know where the bills were. So our Father in Heaven is a wonderful Father. And Kirk and I wanted to tell you how much he has blessed us. Thank you. Thank you for that praise. Rebecca. Rebecca next. <laughs> I'm too tall. <laughs> I just want to have a, a praise and a prayer. Um, my son was arrested, <laughs> but instead of sending him to jail, they sent him to rehab and the mental health facility, and now he is in a rehab facility. So I thank God for those police officers that recognized he, he had needed a mental health facility and I pray for him during his rehab and his, you know, recovery, hopefully. Wonderful. I, I kind of, that brings to mind one other thing, that when we get arrested, sometimes we need it to be stopped, and God provides that. <laughs> That's good news. Our son James called us this morning, and you all know James. Um, he took Crystal to ER last night at 1 a.m. and they had to do an emergency surgery this morning. She had a bowel issue that they had to get fixed and he did let us know the surgery is over with so it's a praise that and they were able to correct everything that was wrong. So just ask you guys to keep him and her in your prayers. Thank you. A wonderful praise and we will keep them in our prayers hi I know we all always pray for our missionaries but I just have felt led to um, request extra prayer for Tom and Laura Requat with everything going on in Mali right now and in Africa so that's my prayer request and my praise is that they are going to be able to come home earlier like they planned but I just for extra safety during this time. Amen. Denise, next. As many of you know, I have family that live in Kauai. Um, my son, his wife, and my almost five grandchildren. Um, because of the fires and devastation in Maui, um, my girls, my granddaughters, have suffered the loss of possibly one family, they don't know for sure yet, and another family they were close to has lost everything. Um, they were supposed to be heading to Lahaina tomorrow for a surf contest, obviously that's not gonna happen. I just pray for all of those that are there, that the government and the people that are in charge, supposedly, will open up the doors so that the help that is already ready to get there will go in. And I pray for all those families who have lost, probably in the hundreds, they think, um, of lives and all of those homes and businesses that have been lost. Thank you. David, back this way to the woods. Sorry, I just have one more. Um, Continued prayers for Skip with what could be going on in him in his life and also Jim We have a doctor's appointment on the 22nd That will tell us if Jim has kidney cancer or not. So just keep him in your prayers Will do Please continue to pray for baby Savannah. She's barely four weeks old, and she starts chemotherapy for 30 days. Just her family, too. Prayer for uh, my husband's cousin. Um, they are in Maui. <laughs> so pray that they get home safely. 
Any other prayer requests? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father God, thank you that uh, we live in a country where we can have services that worship you. Today, we lift all these praises to you and your name through your word that we've studied. And we pray, Lord, that you would continue those blessings because you are great, O oh Lord, great for saving us from ourselves. We also lift up all of the folks who are hurting in so many places around our world. And we especially lift up all of those who are sick and suffering with illnesses of our human flesh, Lord, that was never meant to last forever in the condition that we are in since Adam's fall. But thank you, God, that we have the sacrifice of your son, Jesus, to rescue us from that sinful world that we live in. Give us strength and give us the heart to pray this week for all of those who we know are in need of prayer. We ask all of this in our precious Savior's name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise God. If you're able, will you stand and join us? I pray that we are able to just lift up our voices as we continue to worship him. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to thee. There's a better life. There's a better life. 
If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, we'll save it. He's a prison shaking savior. If you've got chains, oh, he's a chain breaker. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify, testify. If you believe it, if you receive it, if you can feel it, somebody testify. If you got pain, he's a pain taker. If you feel lost, well, he's a way maker. If you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaken savior. If you've got chains, well, he's a chain breaker. Oh, if you need freedom, save it. He's a prison shaken savior. If you've got chains, well, he's a chain breaker. Praise God. Praise God. You may be seated at this time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise Jesus. Praise Jesus. Isn't it amazing that no matter what struggles we have, that even when we don't realize it, Jesus is there? Every time I try to make it on my own Every time I try to stand, I start to fall And all of these lonely roads that I have traveled on There was Jesus And the life I built came crashing to the ground when the friends I had were nowhere to be found I couldn't see it then, but I can see it now There was Jesus In the waiting, in the searching In the healing and the hurting Like a blessing buried in the broken pieces Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know or couldn't see it, there was Jesus. For this man who needs an amazing kind of grace, forgiveness at a price I couldn't pay. I'm not perfect, so I thank God every day. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. Every minute, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even when I didn't know it, I couldn't see it. There was Jesus on the mountains, in the valleys. There was Jesus in the shadows of the alleys. There was Jesus in the fire, in the flood. There was Jesus always is and always was. No, I never walk alone. Never walk You're always alone. there. In the waiting, in the searching, in the healing and the hurting, like a blessing buried in the broken pieces. 
Every minute, every, minute, every, moment, every moment, where I've been and where I'm going, even, even when, when I didn't, didn't know it, I couldn't, couldn't see it. it. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. There was Jesus. Self. Okay, so what he's saying is in order to keep me from exalting myself, you know, and in order to keep me from patting myself on the back, I was given a thorn in my flesh. Now, we need to understand how important this is, and in order to do that, you got to understand what Paul's ministry was really all about. In fact, Paul's whole life, uh, it was focused on one thing and one thing only, and that was teaching about Jesus. It was sharing Jesus. It was bringing the truth about Jesus to the lost. So exalting himself, patting himself on the back just didn't fit the mission, right? Didn't make any sense. So the reason for the thorn was to keep Paul humble. That's the reason for the thorn. She said that in prayer today. She goes, that's what it was for. And I said, you're right. So I added it here. I didn't know that before. But <laughs> it's to keep Paul focused on the message of Jesus, right? And not on himself. Number one in your outline God allowed a thorn in Paul's flesh to keep him focused on Jesus. He allowed a thorn in Paul's flesh to keep him focused on Jesus. Let's go back to verse 7. Therefore, in order to keep me from becoming conceited, I was giving a, a thorn in my flesh. Now, the Vine's Expository Dictionary explains what he meant by thorn in my flesh. It was physical, it was painful, and it was humiliating. And I think that's interesting, don't you? Because, you know, humiliation in and of itself is its own kind of pain, isn't it? It's a, you know, it's a pain all to itself. It was physical, painful, and humiliating. And still in verse 7, he says, it's a messenger of Satan to torment me. Now, again, back to the Vines Dictionary, because I wanted to understand what he meant when he said messenger of Satan. This is what it says. It's the effect of divinely permitted satanic antagonism. That sounds bad, doesn't it? God allowed Satan to stick this thorn in Paul's side. And it also says that it's a constantly repeated attack. So it's on and on and on. Doesn't just not one time and then it ends. It's ongoing. Again, I just can see where Paul might be a guy who might say, why me? Can't you see that? I can see that. Number two in your outline, the thorn that Paul suffered was physical, painful, and humiliating. Physical, painful, and humiliating. On to verse 8, three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. I want to try to get there. If you guys go with me, let's visualize this a minute. Paul is tormented, isn't he? I mean, this thing is happening over and over again, and just the fact that it's a messenger of Satan tells me it was probably pretty terrible, and then it's constantly repeated. Um, I would be asking, why me? I'm sure of that. I bet you most of y'all would be too. So have you ever been there? Ever been there in your life where you, you're like, man, I, you know, this isn't fair. This hurts. It won't go away. You know, the thorn. You've had thorns, right? We all get thorns in our lives, and it doesn't seem fair, does it? A lot of times it doesn't make any sense. And that's why we ask, God, why me? Why am I dealing with this, right? These are the really hard times in our lives. And if they go on long enough, being the humans that we are, we run through an entire gamut of emotions, don't we? I mean, it starts out, uh, you know, with bewilderment, right? It's like, really? Really, I got to do this right now? I mean, I, you know, car battery's not working, and, you know, the dog's sick, and now I got this too, right? And then after a while, you get frustrated, you know? It's like, man, come on, you know? This is ridiculous. Then after a while, we get mad, don't we? I really do. That's my personality. I have a competitive, you know, personality. I want to fight first. That's just what comes natural to me. Um, and then after a while, what happens? We get tired. We get worn out. We get beat down. This is the natural thing that happens uh, when we have a thorn in our side, right? Sometimes it gets to the point you feel like you just can't take it one more day, and you want to know why. Why me? Let me ask you a question. In that very moment, 
right where you don't think you can take another minute of it, wouldn't it be great to have the same faith Paul has? Wouldn't that be helpful? I think it would be. Number three in your outline, Paul had an enormous faith that allowed him to both hear and trust God. He had an enormous faith that allowed him to, to both hear and trust God. That's what Paul had. I mean, I can just see it right now. Three times, man. Three times I've asked you to take this from me. Please take it away from me. I don't understand. It doesn't make any sense. I'm in pain. I'm humiliated. And it just keeps happening over and over again. Lord, please take this away from me. Please. You know, historians say that Paul was likely short and balding, had gnarled up hands, a bent back, possibly a limp, didn't have good eyesight. Can you picture him for a minute? Pacing back and forth. Think about it. Grimacing. Ah, oh, you know, there's that pain again, right? Why? Why is this happening to me? Ah, there it is again, right? Can you see that happening in front of you? Finally, he gets to the point. His eyes turn to the heavens and he's like, I can't take this anymore. Please take it away from me. Please, Lord. Why do I have this? But here's the thing. Right there in his darkest moment, right there when he was struggling the most, his faith kicked in. His faith kicked in. And here's God in verse 9. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you. My grace is all you need, Pam. My grace is all you've got to have to get through this, John. My grace is enough. You don't need anything else. Just me. Just my grace. Have you ever wanted to hear God in that moment? Let me ask you this. Have you ever needed to hear God in that moment? I'm betting we all have, right? Just to hear him say, dude, it's okay. I got you, man. I got you. My grace is enough. You don't need anything else. It's okay. I know it's hard. I understand what you're going through, but I got a plan. I got a plan for you. See, I made a promise, didn't I? In Romans 8, 28, and we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. I made a promise. I got you. My grace is enough. Okay? I get it. I know it's hard. I know it may not make a lot of sense right now. You can't see the end game, right? But I'm working. I'm working. I'm working on you. I'm working through you. That's what you can't see. See, Paul heard God. He heard God because of his faith, and it meant everything to him in that moment in time. When he called out to God, God heard. And guess what? God answered, right? God heard him, and God answered him. It's a promise, you know. And, you know, again, I told you, Paul was a, a really educated dude. Okay, he really, he knew, he knew Old Testament scripture. He was a smart fella. So he would have known the promise in the book of Jeremiah. Jeremiah 33, 2 and 3 says, This is what the Lord says, He who made the earth, the Lord who formed it and established it, his, the Lord is his name, this is what he said, Call to me. Call to me and I will answer you. Gabby says, call to me, Mom. And Mom says, I'm there, right? Call to me. I'll answer you. And guess what? Not just that he's going to answer you, but I'm going to tell you great and unsearchable things that you don't know. Great and unsearchable things. That's pretty cool, don't you think? What a promise. So let me ask you this. Do you think that right in the middle there of Paul's pain, of his humiliation, when he was under constant attack from that messenger of Satan, do you think that what God told him was the great thing that was promised in the book of Jeremiah? In that moment in time, I guarantee it was. It's exactly what Paul needed to hear, and we know that because he proves it out. When he says, therefore, 
I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. Boy, you're talking about a faith now. That's a faith. That's a faith. I'm going to brag about what I can't do. I'm going to brag about what he can do through me. I can't do it on my own. How do we build a faith like Paul's? Number four in your outline. I got four things for you. The first one is we build up a strong faith by getting into God's word every day. You guys hear me say that, don't you? Anybody ever heard me say that? Anybody? Get into God's word every day. Man, I just wonder how many of us don't do that. Prayerful time in God's word is critical to our walk. It's critical. Tell you what I'm going to do. I've got several hours till dark. Everybody has a smartphone right now. Please pull it out. Please. I'm asking you to please pull your phone out. I'm going to take my time till you get your phones out. I might play drums. I might sing. So you better hurry because you don't want that. Every smartphone has an alarm app. Go to your alarm app right now. Set a time for tomorrow. I don't care what the time is. Whatever it is, it works in your life. Set a time for tomorrow. Read the Bible. That's the alarm. I'm watching. Okay. I'm not doing that. And then when, you, when that alarm goes off tomorrow, what I want you to do is set that alarm for every day. Every day. Read the Bible every day. I cannot impress upon you how important that is. Nancy, is that important? She's a lot smarter than me. A, get in God's word every day. B, go to church every week. We're talking about how we can build a strong faith Get in God's word every day. Come to church every week. If you can't get here physically, get online. But you need to be here physically. I need you. Robin, I got to have you. You got to be here. You can bring him. <laughs> be in church every week. See, we can't encourage you if you're not here. You can't encourage us if you're not here. We can't build each other up if you ain't here. Besides, you can't really... It's not the same looking at me through that camera as it is in person, huh? Come on. Come on. Be in church every week. C, attend adult Sunday school every week. Now, can we talk for a minute? See, I just don't think there are very, very many excuses you could give me for not being here for Sunday school. It's one hour. Come on, man. Get here at 9.20, stay away from the, the breads and stuff that Nancy and Shirley bring, but the other stuff's good. You're not going to want that stuff. <laughs> Grab a coffee and get in there and, and learn. It's a different way of learning the Bible than what I can do from here. Be here for adult Sunday school. D, attend the Tuesday afternoon Bible study. Dudes, let me tell you something. Pastor Tom has forgotten a thousand times what I'll ever know. He rips that thing apart every Tuesday afternoon, shows you where it connects throughout the Bible, and puts it back together. It's so unique. It's so unique. I can't tell you how cool it is. And I'm usually there, so you're going to want to be here. Tuesday afternoon Bible study. You want to build a strong faith like Paul's? <laughs> Get in God's word every day. Come to church every week. Show up for Sunday school. Show up for Bible study. That's how we build a strong faith. I can prove it. Romans 10, 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by what? Whoa. Whoa. Word of God. Get in it every day and get in here. Right? See, Paul had that kind of faith. What did Paul do? He says, hey, look at me. I'm a weakling. Check me out, man. I'm not enough. I can't do it on my own. I'm not perfect. That's what Paul did, right? Because he had a faith he could do that. 
But here's today's lesson, okay? Here's what you're going to take with you today. Verse 9, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. Why? So Christ's power may rest on me. That's why. Number five in your outline, a strong faith allows Christ's power to rest on us. A strong faith. See, here's what, here's what Paul did. He said, you know what? I'm a weakling. But my God is so powerful. He's so mighty, right? He said, I'm not perfect, but he says he loves me anyway. Can you believe that? I'm not enough, but he's way more than enough, right? I can't do it on my own, but I can do it through him. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through him who gives me strength. So how did Paul deal with that thorn in the flesh? Number six in your outline. Paul was able to deal with the thorn in the flesh because of his what? Faith. Say it again. Faith. One, two, three. Faith. faith. He had an enormous faith. He trusted God. And guess what? He wrote half the New Testament. We're still talking about him today. We're still learning from Paul today. Check this out. God is still using Paul... In a mighty way, 2,000 years later. Why? Because of his faith. Because of his faith. Now, here's the funny thing about faith. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to tell you the truth. Paul's faith didn't stop him from hurting. Paul's faith didn't stop him from being attacked. Paul's faith didn't stop him from being in prison. His faith didn't stop him from being stoned. His faith didn't stop him from being flogged. His faith didn't stop him from being martyred. His faith stopped him from giving up. His faith stopped him from losing the war. Paul's faith is changing the populations of heaven and hell and has been for 2,000 years. That's pretty cool. That is, don't you think that's pretty cool? I think that's pretty cool. Now, how big is your faith? Is it big enough to allow you to boast about your thorns? That's a big question. Why don't you think about that a minute? Is your faith big enough for you to stand up and say, yo, look at me. I'm weak. I'm not perfect. I can't do it on my own. The Greek word for faith is pistis. It means belief and trust, but that's not the end of it. It's belief and trust with an implication that actions based on that trust will follow. So don't tell me you got faith. Don't put the hat on. You know, don't post it on Facebook and think you're covered. I want to see you act it out in your life. All of us need to do that. Number seven in your outline, faith is belief and trust in God with actions based on that trust. Actions like what? Getting in the Bible, right? Coming to church. Witnessing to people. Serving. We need help in the children's church. We need help with other stuff. I need lots of help, right? Come on. Actions. You follow it up with actions. That's what faith is. Do we understand what faith is? I want to make sure every person walks out that door today understands what faith is. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Now, faith is confidence in what we hope for. And assurance about what we do not see. Isn't that pretty cool? Confidence in what we hope for and assurance in what we can't see. See, Paul, he hoped for relief from the messenger of Satan, didn't he? Wouldn't, he had to have. How could he not? I pleaded three times for him to take it away. He hoped for relief, right? And he found it. Where did he find it? In Christ's power. He got there through his faith. His assurance about what he could not see, see, that allowed him to delight in his weaknesses for Christ's sake. He got there through his faith. Paul had enormous faith. He had an enormous faith. I'm going to take you off the path just for a second, just a thought from a feeble mind, okay? Luke 12, 33 says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. Provide purses for yourself that will not wear out, a treasure in heaven that will never fail, where no thief comes near and no moth destroys. See, I, I have this belief, and I'm not a real smart guy, so I guess maybe I'm wrong, but I believe that the treasure in heaven are people. 
That's what I think. I think that the treasure are the souls who get there, at least partially because of you. See, Jesus taught us over and over and over again to do what? Love each other, serve each other, honor each other, right? He never teaches us about things that we would consider to be treasures. Gold, diamonds, new truck. Jesus doesn't tell us about new trucks, right? He tells us to love God and he tells us to love people. Okay, so now if I'm correct, if that's the case, how much treasure does Paul have? Think about that. 2,000 years of people going to heaven. Man, dude's got to have some treasure, don't you think? Why? Because of his faith. So my message to you today is to not wait for the next thorn to build your faith. Don't wait for the next thorn. Listen, there's a thorn tomorrow. There's another one next week. There's one next month. Life's full of thorns, right? Faith's like a muscle. The more you work it, the stronger it gets. Start building that stronger faith right now so you're ready for the next thorn. Getting God's word every day. Has anybody ever heard me say that? I'll bet you half of us don't do it. Get in God's word every single day. Get to church, get to Sunday school, get to Bible study. The time to build a strong faith is right now. Not when the next thorn gets here, right? You take your car in when the battery dies because the battery's dead, right? That doesn't, I mean, where you at? When the car's not running, where you at, right? Build the faith right now. Don't wait for the next thorn. Number eight in your outline, an enormous faith can help you know that God has a reason for allowing your next thorn. You know they're coming. You know they're coming, right? The thorns are coming. Amen? So build your faith right now so you're ready for the next thorn. Does that make sense? First Sunday of the month, we get the privilege the honor, the opportunity to celebrate the sacrifice Jesus made for us. And we're going to do that today. I'm going to ask Brother Skip and Gary if you'd come up and, and uh, help me with the elements. When you get the elements, please hang on to them. We'll take them as a family. okay? And while they're passing these elements out, I want you to think about something. We've been talking about faith today. We're talking about how God allows thorns in our lives, right? Ultimately, all of that is so we can bring the lost home. That's what it's all about. It's all about the Great Commission, right? So other people can be saved through our experiences. When he did what he did, he ushered in the new covenant. He ushered in the new deal for us. We should never forget that. It's so important it never gets forgotten. We've got to do it, and we've got to teach the younger people to do it so that it's getting done when we're home. We've got to remember the sacrifice Jesus made for us. So if you guys would just examine your own hearts and your relationship with Jesus while these gentlemen pass out the elements. I'm going to take a look at Luke 22, 19, because this is really a pretty simple message, isn't it? Jesus was there with his disciples, it says, and he took bread. He gave thanks, and he broke it. Gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This is my body given for you. It was for all of us. What he went through, what his body went through was a gift for us. Was it not? What a great sacrifice he made for us. If you take the bread and just hold it right out there for a minute, I want to make sure we're clear. It's just a wafer. It's just a cracker. Okay. But what he did wasn't just a sacrifice. It was the ultimate sacrifice. What he did for us was it gave us a future. It gave us the opportunity for reservations, right? Again, we can never forget this. It's so important we keep this going and teach younger generations to do it because what he did should never be forgotten. Father, thank you for the, the gift, the gift of salvation. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for the broken body. We love you.
We just love you and we honor you. Take the bread, please. Verse 20 says, in the same way after the supper, he took the cup, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. You know, this is maybe the single most important verse of the whole Bible, the new covenant. It's the new covenant. This is what Jesus did for us. Gave us the opportunity for a one-on-one relationship with the Father. That we didn't have before that since the fall of man. What a great gift. What a great sacrifice. And again, we can never forget it. We can never let the world forget it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for the spilled blood, for the shed blood, and for salvation, for your love for us. We just thank you for it. We love you, and we thank you for it. We honor you now in Jesus' name. Please take the cup. In the book of Matthew, it says that after this, they sang a song, and then they went out. So we're going to stand up, please, as a congregation, as a church family, and we're going to sing this last song with the, with the team, and we're going to honor Jesus with this song, okay? You guys have a terrific week. I love y'all. wounds which mar the chosen one bring many sons to glory behold the man upon the cross my sin upon his shoulders ashamed I hear my 
Jesus came one winter night. He took a hold of my heart. Oh, I cried to him. I said, please come in. Won't you please come in and make my sin.
Hallelujah. Go enjoy the wonderful food.